What is up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Jessie's Journey, or if you're new here, hello, welcome, so glad you're here. My name is Jessie, an American expat, currently living in Macedonia, also currently super sick. Um, basically for the last like three, three days, I've been bedridden. Um, whew, that sounded really dramatic. I basically, for one night, I had like a weird like stomach bug. Um, and then after that, I've just basically had a really bad cold, but my stomach's also just been kind of queasy, but I haven't gone sick for a couple days. Um, but basically, I'm starting to go stir crazy because I've been in my room for so long. It looks like a decently warm day outside. So I think I'm just gonna go for a short walk around my block. Um, I don't think it will be more than 10 minutes because I don't know if my body can handle that. But I figured, why don't I take you guys along with me um, while I wonder and fill you in on what's been going on in the last month here in Macedonia because I've been here for a month now. Um, some crazy things have happened. And yeah, I want to fill you guys in on everything. trying to find a quiet place to walk around in my neighborhood. There's so many people out to do that. It's so nice out, so I think they're all hanging outside. Um, so I just found a little path. I don't know if it's private property. There are literally some roosters right there. I think I just scared off. Um, but I'm going to wander around up here. I don't know if I'm allowed to be up here. But, you know, hey -oh, it's quiet. It's greenish. It's muddy, but it's greenish. Um, I feel like I'm sound of music or something. Um, let me show you, like this looks like the perfect kind of frolicking for Maria type of location. So I'm just gonna wander around and hopefully not trespass on somebody's property. But you know, if I do, I'll just play the ignorant foreigner card, which is not something you should do. Don't take my advice. Don't do that. I do it a lot. Um, but yeah, so I've basically been in Macedonia now for a month. Um, I can't believe it's been a month. It's kind of like flown by. I can't believe February's coming on. I know February is like a short month. So that makes sense. But yeah, February's on and it's March now, which is mind blowing to me. Um, but this last month was really, really eye opening. Um, I spent the majority of my days um, along at the refugee camp, and I've learned a lot about myself. I've learned a lot about people. Um, and yeah, it's crazy because I feel like when I came into it, I was the one expecting to make impact, but really everybody I've met so far has had a huge impact for me. Um, maybe I should start there with like people I've met. Um, I guess like the first two super important people I met were my family that I'm staying with, the mom and dad, Tony and Victoria. Um, they are the most amazing, kind people ever. Even like the last few days of being sick, literally, Vicky has brought me tea almost every hour on the hour to take care of me. Like she's the kindest human ever. Um, and the thing is like, even with that, like it's not just them. It feels like it's like everybody here has that mentality. Like I work with a group of all Albanian men um, and they're all amazing they're hilarious I'll talk a little bit more about them in a second but like for them it seems like every day they're trying to get me to eat something or drink something or like not like force me into it but like just out of like hospitality and kindness um, and I feel like that's not something you really do in the States um, and then even coming from Prague like that was definitely not a thing you did um, and so that's definitely been an amazing adjustment and has taught me a lot about just like serving people wholeheartedly serving people without any intent behind it um, or hope for an outcome um, like it just amazes me what love looks like when you're loving people who can't really 
like without the expectation that they're giving anything back to you. Like that feels like the most truest form of love. Um, and I've gotten to see that so many times. Um, Vicky and Tony are great off like um, examples of that. Like the guys at work, even the refugees I've had. Um, there was like on my very first day. Um, I'm going to turn so we can get this view in the background. I don't know if it's even going to pick up on my camera. Um, side note, if you hear clicking, it's because I had dropped my camera a while back um, and I just smashed the lens the other day on accident. Um, and so now it just clicks really loud, so apologies for that. Um, but on my very first day at the refugee camp, I met this woman. It's her, her husband, and her son. I believe they were from Afghanistan. And literally like i went in to talk to her because there were no other women at the camp um i wanted to fill her in on like my life and hear about her life and just have like girl chat with her because she hadn't had that for so long um and literally like every two minutes she was bringing me out some kind of food she was bringing me out some kind of drink like she was offering me like her personal supplies and stuff and it's like one of those things where it's like you don't have much like she has very very little um and like her life is just like a constant struggle and fear like she was telling me stories about all the times she thought she was going to die or that she thought her son had died in her arms like stuff like that but still she chose to have a servant's heart and to love and care and prioritize people first and i just like i can't even begin to imagine what the world would be like if we all truly lived that way The wind's really picking up right now and I can feel that my mascara is running so apologies for that. I might as well look a mess because I feel a mess. Also it's like low-key burning my eyeballs. Whew, I'm a mess. Um, but let's talk about my Albanian band of brothers that I've been working with <laughs> um, because they are some major characters um, and I love them. But they're major characters um, and they're a huge part of my story here in Macedonia. Okay, so, as I mentioned before, I currently work with a team of all Macedonian men. I'm like the only woman at the camp most of the times. Um, I feel like some of the guys might be watching this video right now, so what's up guys? Missed you the last few days. Um, <laughs> But they are like some of the funniest characters I've ever met. <laughs> I feel like maybe I don't want to perpetuate stereotypes on this channel, um, but I feel like they hit a lot of like the stereotypes that you would expect of Albanian men. Um, if you know anything about Albanian men, um, uh, one of them cracked me up because on like the first day he was like, "Have you seen Taken?" And I was like, obviously, I am Liam Neeson obsessed. Um, and apparently the bad guys in that are all Albanian, which like is really, I mean, it's not funny. It's like funny in hindsight, but also I need to not be so judgy. Um, but like my very first day when the guys texted me being like, hey, we're coming to your apartment to pick you up. Um, we'll like drive you where you need to get to get to the camp. Um, I definitely had a moment where I was like, you know what? I'm actually about to be taken, like, these guys are going to kidnap me and kill me, um, and nobody's ever going to hear of me ever again, and nobody will know, like, who got me, um, because I'm in the middle of nowhere in Macedonia, um, which, you know, obviously, especially for female solo travelers, be safe, be aware of your surroundings, um, but also, like, not okay to just assume the worst out of people um, at all times. Um, I acknowledge sometimes you have to, but yeah, I definitely forced these stereotypes of what I thought they were gonna be like. And funny story, the one guy when we pick him up, we like pull off onto the side of the highway to get him. And literally my first day as they were like slowing the car down on the side of the highway, I was like, yep, this is it. This is my moment, I'm about to die. Um, but though they are like, truly some of the most amazing humans. I feel like I'm running out of walking path to wander on. Um, and I have a bunch of mud on my shoes. Um, but, ugh, gross. 
sorry <laughs> pulled a bunch of mud out of my foot um but they are some of the kindest most dedicated guys i know um i feel like they're very like not very like they are very proud of their culture and their heritage and yes they I guess were born in Macedonia they were raised here but they are are Albanian um, if you ask them they'll tell you that everybody's Albanian um, literally <laughs> I feel like they've somehow always made it so that like you can trace your heritage back to being Albanian um, even if you're like oh I'm from Spain, like I'm half Spanish. And then they would be like, well, during this and this and this, this happened. So really you're Albanian. Um, but I feel like they just have a lot of pride in their community and their culture. And I think because of that, they feel very like fierce in how they protect it. Um, and so it does feel like I feel, I know this is like stupid and like kind of plays into stereotypes, but I feel very like safe and secured in them because I feel like I'm a part of the group and like part of like their care and their protection and just the way they care for people and the way they serve other people and love other people. Um, you can just see it in their actions and in their words and in their behavior and mannerisms. Um, and so yeah, I have loved working with them. Um, they also are very big like show body type people like they will put on performances for you let me tell you. Um, now. I don't know if that's all Albanians in general or just the guys that I work with because they're all hams. Um, but it has been a constant laugh um, the entire time I've been there um, with them. They definitely help lighten the mood because it can get very serious and get very heavy. Um, and yeah, I'm just so grateful that I've gotten to work with them. So I guess really this update is mainly about people because you know that's why I am here. Um, I'm here for people, to love people, to care for people, to serve people, um, to impact people and to have all of those things I guess kind of given back to me. Um, like I feel like I say this a lot but anytime I feel like I'm going to impact somebody they end up impacting me more and so um, this I guess it's just gonna be a people-centric vlog. Um, but the last group of people that I really wanted to talk about, which is my main reason for being here, are the refugees at the refugee camp that I'm working at. Um, so I work Monday through Friday at this refugee camp. Um, and I teach English. I started teaching just an hour, um, and then we added an extra lesson. So I teach an hour in the morning, an hour in the afternoon. Um, usually we get there between 10 and 11. I start at 11, we have lunch break, and then in the afternoon I meet up with them again um, for an hour and then after that we usually play like football like actual football not American football um, play football or ping pong or something like that um, but yeah these people I just I like don't really know how to adequately put in towards the impact they've had in my life um, so Generically, there's usually only men at the camp. Um, this past week, there every once in a while, like a woman popped up. So I'm working at a transit camp. So basically, people come here in transit to try to get somewhere else. Um, it's just a very temporary type place. Um, some people stay for a day. Some people stay for a month or two. Um, some people stay for a couple more months. It just like it really depends on the person. Um, but the core group of people at the camp right now are all men. Um, and then occasionally we get women and children that come through for like a day or two um which is interesting because that's not what i was expecting when i was originally planning on coming here i thought i was mainly going to be working with children but um i'm really grateful that i am actually working with all men um i've had the same core group of men 
since my first day that I've been working with. Um, I've had a few come and go here and there, um, but generally everybody has been the same that I've been working with and I think they're kind of sticking it out until I leave it, um, just so that they can get these English lessons for free and then also like timing wise, it's not ideal travel time. We just got a bunch of snow um, last week, although it is getting warmer now. It's nice and warm and sunny today. Um, but most of the men I'm working with are from Syria. Um, Although I have a couple people that are from Middle East, so Pakistan, Afghanistan, um, and I think I had a couple people from Iran at one point. Um, I don't think I've had anybody from Iraq, but <clears throat> a few from there. And then a surprising amount of people from uh, Libya, um, which I am guess I'm kind of just ignorant to what really going on. I know there is a lot going on in Libya, but I think when you like think of the refugee crisis, you think of Syria. So it makes sense that I have a lot of Syrian men um, at the camp, but um, a diverse group, um, they're men ages, I'd say like mid twenties to mid to late forties. Um, and what's been the craziest thing for me to experience is the men, they are men, like they're old, older men, not old, older men. Um, but when I have them in my class, I look at them and I feel like they look like little boys. And it's amazing to see like the impact that war has on people, like the things that it just takes away from you. And like, I cannot sit here and say that I by any means no, and that I by any means even like can feel that because I have nothing to compare that to. Um, I can have as much empathy as I can try to have, but like I just I will never understand that. But when I see them, I get these glimpses in my class daily like every couple of minutes, somebody does something where I'm like, You look like a scared little boy, and it's interesting because also at the same time, these. Are, they're strong, brave men who are doing what they're doing, and so it's such a weird juxtapos juxtaposition to see. Um, and it's like, it's so heartbreaking. Um, I don't, I've talked about my faith before on this channel, and it's something that I've constantly had to question as to like why some people have the hands dealt to them that they do, and I think. It's something there are very cookie cutter answers, but when you see that actually like in real life, it's very hard to see. Like even talking to my um, Albanian friends, the men I work with, they say all the time that like, oh, you're lucky you have the strongest passport. Like you can travel, you can basically like the world's kind of my oyster because I was born American, but I had no say over that. <laughs> like it just happened and that's, crazy to me like these guys had no say over the fact that they were going to be born into a war-torn country and have to flee for their life and see horrific things and like just experience like the worst things you could ever imagine but on top of that like they still like it's interesting when I first met them like if you ask like oh how are you like their instinct would be oh I'm sad oh this this but as I've gotten to know them like you can pull more out of them to see what they find joy in and it amazes me how these guys still find joy um and it's it's a crazy yeah it's crazy to experience and i know i'm not adequately putting it into words which is really frustrating um and i feel like it's going to be one of those things that when i'm done here i'm going to go home and people are going to want to know about it and um i don't really know how i'm going to tell them because it's one of those things that I don't know if you can even tell if you, like, you, I feel like you have to experience it to know, um, and I just don't, yeah, I don't know how to do this experience justice, um, but I feel so grateful and thankful that I'm getting to do this, and um, I've learned a lot about just the way I want to care for people and serve people more going forward from this. Um, it's definitely like coming off of teaching and then going into teaching in a few months when I start up my new job. Um, 
like I know that I knew this was gonna be a different change and it was gonna be a break and this whole purpose of this is to serve and so I think like I need to take what I've learned here and apply it then into like areas of life that aren't necessarily about serving like are serving people but it's not like that typical like missiony servicey type thing um but yeah it's it's been a crazy month um <clears throat> I wish I could share personal stories I wish I could show you more um but like I said there's something that I'm gonna think I'm gonna hold close to my heart um and just cherish and try to let my actions share those stories instead of my words um so yeah I think that's all I have to say for now thanks for tuning into this video if you made it to this far um but make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe to my youtube channel so you get video updates in the future I'm soon going to be announcing where I'm moving to next because I just had an official job offer contract signing um and so that's coming very very soon um, and so yeah, lots of things happening here. Um, also, I think I'm going to be doing some videos in the future talking about like the refugee crisis. So if that's something that you're even interested in or just don't even really know that much about because I feel like I don't really know that much about it and I'm like here working in it. So um, definitely something that if you're interested, please hit that subscribe button so you get those video updates in the future. Um, and I'll see y'all next Tuesday with a new Jesse's Journey video. Okay, bye guys.